However, this is down a little bit on torque, but how does that translate to out here on the road? Well, let's just say there is never an instance where you feel flat-footed. Like for example, let's go around this turn here and uh, downshift to two, come out with a little power, and the thing just pulls like a freight train. Even with the extra weight of this thing, this thing's like almost 5,200 pounds. Let me repeat that, 5,200 pounds, but almost 600 horsepower and 561 pound-feet of torque absolutely get you out of any instance where you feel maybe a little bit flat-footed. So that's totally no surprise, because when you have almost 600 horsepower and 561 pound-feet of torque, Let's just say you're not going to be without power. If anything, you've got the same problem Spider-Man has. With great power comes great responsibility. But what Spider-Man doesn't have is an AMG exhaust. Now, I know this is going to sound weird, but let's slow down and downshift and just listen to this. <laughs> I think we should do that again. It's just snarls and burbles and gets angry at you. Your incredibly expensive AMG sport utility vehicle that doesn't have as much utility as the other sport utility vehicles yells at you when you tell it to go slower. And that is a wonderful thing. So this is a curious case of trading one utility for another. So, now don't get me wrong here, there is a significant amount of storage back here, but being honest, we are all slaves to design. That's why we have this fast seat pillar here, and really this utility vehicle doesn't have as much utility. That is why it is very creatively called a coupe. Now here's where I get confused. When this segment was invented many years ago, I was the first one to say, who would buy such a vehicle? It's a utility vehicle that doesn't have utility. But then the segment kind of exploded, and now I look at it kind of as an equation. If you think of the coupe up here as one part, and then the utility down here as another part, so that's one plus one, and then you have all-wheel drive, so that's four, the question is, when you add all of that together, suspension, the utility pieces down here, and the design, does that equal more than six? Okay, so I already let the dirty little secret out of the bag that this thing weighs 5,200 pounds. And that is definitely going to have an effect on driving dynamics. Um, but after all, this thing is an SUV, at least from here down. From here up, it's got this sort of coot look thing about it. And really, if you look at the ass end, it looks just like that S65 coot that we love so much. Um, but really, there are two things going on here. There's this adjustable dynamic control system here, and there's an adjustable, they call it airmatic, but adjusts more than the air suspension. So let's focus over here. So we've been doing this whole thing so far in Sport Plus. And so really all of these five modes, it's really four plus an individual mode, they adjust things like transmission mapping, engine mapping, the dampers, even adjust the ride height. So like we're in Sport Plus mode, it lowers uh, the ride height by about a quarter of an inch. There's even a slippery mode. Now granted we're in, what is it? It's like 70 degrees out in southern Germany, so we're not going to use the slippery mode. That's generally for foul weather. And really that kind of adjusts the, the transmission mapping so that transmission will start in a higher gear, the ride height goes up, so you can deal with inclement weather a bit better. Then there's the sport, which is like, you know what, I feel aggressive today, but not too aggressive. Um, and then there's the comfort mode, and this is the one where the ride height goes to the highest mode, and it drives kind of like the ML. It's got a little bit more compliance in the suspension. But then there's this individual mode, and this is where you can adjust each of the pieces, so the transmission, the engine, and the suspension individually. So like, if you want the transmission to be in sport mode, I can go in here and select the transmission, and I can literally go between manual and automatic drive. So if I put it in manual, now listen to that. One interesting note when you set the transmission in manual mode, you can hear it, it's redlining, it won't shift but it's telling you it's a big red two up and it's screaming at you to shift. So let's go ahead and upshift. 
Now the transmission is another instance like we've been here before. We've driven this transmission in the S63. And this is an interesting thing because we'll drive the GLE 450 when we get back to California. We just didn't have enough time to get to that one. Um, that has a new 9-speed transmission. And really what they're doing there is the 9 speeds is all about fuel economy. But an interesting thing about that 9-speed, it's going away from what Mercedes has done in other new cars, even all the way down to the CLA, where it's a torque converter like that S65 we drove instead of a dual clutch. But this transmission, this is the 7-speed, and it's virtually the same as you 